Welcome to Real Talk with Tina and Ann. I am Ann, and Tina will be back soon. Today, we are having Miss Betty Smith on our program, and she is not like any other woman that I've ever met or heard of before, honestly. Miss Betty, I am honored to have you on Real Talk. This is a place where we talk about uplifting stories, and yours is definitely one. I've met you before, and I was able to interview you, but it was years and years ago and right. I have to tell you though I never forgot mm -hmm. you you Thank really you. really you. left an impression on my heart and me Thank wanting you. to make a different and a difference in other people's lives so thank I want to so thank much. you for that you're welcome thank you for having me on your show I'm I feel very honored and privileged to be on your show you know I saw you in a parade the other day and your energy was like off the charts. And I saw a post that you put up that said that you made it, you know, 2.2 miles. And I would say that you actually danced 2.2 miles. So <laughs> I had so much fun. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, and, and, and you know what? Um, and I was so blessed to be able to do it because I didn't know if I could because I had the emergency open heart surgery in February. Right. And then uh, then I broke a toe and then July I was in ER for dehydration. And I said, I am going to do this parade, you know, so that's why I put the post up that I made it, yeah, you know, yeah. and I, the whole time with the kids and dance into the cadences and just had a great time. Yeah, I could tell. Time. I could yeah. tell mm -hmm. you have such a childlike spirit. And your energy is so infectious. I mean, what has made you this way? You know, um, and I've always been very um, kind of like into involved in athletics and exercise and everything from a small girl. I used to turn cartwheels. I don't know what the kids call them today. We call them cartwheels. <laughs> and my mother used to say, every time I'm looking for you, you're upside down, you know, because I'm just... <sighs> And I had all this energy and she's trying to corral me, right? With all this energy. So I used a lot of that energy to work with the young kids in my neighborhood. I mean, we were very poor and growing up. I mean, we were dirt poor. I didn't know we were so poor because we had a lot of love. Um, and my mother's house was open to any and everybody. She had seven children. My dad oh my died goodness. when she was, she was a widow at 28. Oh and, goodness. um, God did bless her with a husband five years later. He was 20 years older than her, but he was wonderful to us. And there were seven of us. But uh, to say all that, we just had a lot of people in, in our yard. And, uh, you know, we only had a two-bedroom home. And, but I told mother, every piece of furniture is a bed. <laughs> you know, we could pull out the chairs and the sofas. And, and then in those days, you could sleep outside. You know, oh, it was wow. warm and it was safe. Okay. So in the summer, we just put blankets outside and sleep outside. And so I just had, a, I always had a lot of energy, you know, probably in that day, they might've said I was ADHD or something, you know, <laughs> ADD, because I had so much energy, um, but I was always wanted to be busy. And I always worked with the young people, even though I was young, right? but I always oh. gathered them together, you know, and did something not realizing this was going to be, the, this was the calling on my life. Yeah, and I just feel like God was preparing me for what I'm doing now, really, you know, you know, yeah, I was just going to say how you always had a connection with kids. I mean, I can remember it years ago, and I can definitely see it now. I mean, they respect you. They look to you. They listen to you. And, you know, that's really saying something in this day and age. So, uh -huh. I mean, what makes it so there that connection is there with the young people? Where did it originate? Which you say it happened when you were younger. When I was younger and 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 I would gather all the kids together. I was just I just wanted to be busy. And so they were doing nothing. And I'm like, oh. okay, let's let's do this. And I would plan little things and I'd make little invitations on cards and pass them out to the kids in the neighborhood. And then I'd say, well, what do you want to do? And, you know, and we would get, oh we, had, we had a little, we just did a lot of things together. Some of the things the kids don't even do together. We played something called jacks, you know, where you have these oh. jacks and then you throw the ball and you catch them and all that stuff. And then we made our own little scooters um, and, mm -hmm. and we had boxcar racing and you build your own boxcar. So we didn't have money. So we had to do the best we could with what we had. 
And See, a lot of this teamwork, you know, with the kids. And imagination, so imagination. Yes. I mean, Most what, a lot, what a lot of kids are lacking today because of right. social media and everything that's right. else that's going on. That's exactly right. And then, you know, also, um, I loved music. I always loved music. And so I remember I started uh, my mother, my, we, like I said, my mother, she just, she was a domestic and she would just get extra jobs and she bought me a piano because I'd be taking my fingernails and clicking on glass and, you know, trying to sing with that, you know, that sound of the glass. And so I heard oh, her say, geez. I have to get her a piano. Okay. So she raised, she, she took an extra job to make $50 to buy me this upright piano. Um, and so I played by ear, I could hear a song and then I would sit down and play it and the kids would come in and sing. And so we belonged to church. And so I started a little choir at the church. And so I would, so this is music has been part of me all my life. And then when I started taking lessons, I played clarinet. I was in the, I was in the orchestra. I was in the marching band. Oh. Um, I was also in a uh, choir and we had a little group called Four Jacks and I was Jill. So oh it was Four goodness. Jacks and a Jill. That's and awesome. We were, listen, Anne, we were good. We even eventually joined the union. And oh, at that wow. time, the union was we played three hours of, and our rate of pay was $3.33 an hour. Oh, my goodness. But with that little money, you know, I could help mother buy my school books and things like that, you know. So music that's why I'm in music now. It's right. it's been a part of me. It kept me grounded and it got kids off the street and we sang and we belonged, you know, every time there was a talent show or something at the school, we participated, you know, and we just seemed mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Yeah. So it all started. See, I always tell young people, you don't know sometimes why you do what you do, but it's, you'd be planning I think God is planting a seed for what's going to be happening later in your life. Amen. So just embrace those things, you know? I say it all the time. Absolutely. I mean, everything is a stepping stone to where we're going. I believe that. Most definitely. And so that's, you know, that's how from a young girl, you know, 10, 11 years old, and then going into music, getting to the high school and the band and the swing band and all. Yeah, we had swing band too. I forgot about that. But I was in all the music things. And then I also was in sports. I love basketball. But, you know, and in those days, women played on a half court and you could only dribble the ball two times, you know, because mm. they were, you know, women not supposed to be doing sports, right? Right. So you get a half court. And I thought, I play the full court. And I said, no, 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 you can only do half. And so it was very frustrating for me, <laughs> you know, because yeah. we, two steps, you, you only dribble the ball twice and you have to pass it. I know, yeah, anybody listening this will probably say, this is crazy, but, yeah. you know, but I mean, that's, that's really the way it was. Right. Um, we did that. But anyway, it's just, so, you know, all of those things in sports. And so, and then I ran track when I was in school. Okay. Um, so I've always been busy and athletic, you know, and then, then I got into the healthy eating thing. And I'm not even sure where that started. I used to be very heavy. Uh, oh. I used to weigh like 167 pounds and all growing up, I was heavy, even though I was active. Okay. But when I turned 18 and moved to Chicago with my aunt, you know, it was hard for me to find a job because in those days, they really discriminated. If you were heavy, they, oh they didn't want me to be the reception. I'm serious. And mm -hmm. I had one gentleman say, you need to lose some weight. And I said, excuse me. And he says, well, mm. you know, you don't, you don't want to a boss doesn't want a real heavy set receptionist sitting at the desk. And it was very mm. like, wow. So mm. I went on a diet. I went on a diet, although I needed to lose weight because it wasn't healthy, you know. Right. But I lost the weight and I and I liked the way I looked. I said, well, I do look better. I do feel better. But how dare you say you won't hire me because I'm heavy. But in those days, it, you could do it and get by. Couldn't do that today. <laughs> discriminate but you know I lost the weight and I kept it off and then I really got into eating healthy and saying oh I shouldn't be eating this and uh, oh this is really oh I need to eat more fruit oh I need to drink more water okay and that's kind of been part of me you know from, mm -hmm. from like eight, age 18 mm -hmm. and now that doesn't mean that I don't sometimes eat french fries or a piece of cake or something you know I'm not right. that strict a lot of right. people today are really strict right and I'm not 
no, no. I do moderation, you know, in what I eat and try to keep my weight down. But I'm active and I'm glad I am because, see, because now I'm working with these children right. and the drum line and I march with the drum line. So I told right. him, I said, I always try to be the example. I said, now I'm 84. And I said, oh. if I can do this, you can do this. Yes. Don't let me outdo you. And I, sometimes I still can with the young people. You know, I worked out with them when they were um, practicing for the grand parade. And some of them, they were winded. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not huffing and mm-hmm. puffing. Mm-hmm. Come on, young people. But see, our young people today don't take care of themselves the way they should. They right. don't eat healthy. They do a lot of fast foods. They right. do a lot of sugar. Right. And these energy drinks, terrible. Oh, it's just yeah. terrible. Horrible. You know? Yeah, I don't yeah. let my kids touch them. Right. No, good for you. They shouldn't. So, you know, I just give back what I have. I use the experiences that I had when I was growing up and things and just try to make their life better. Well, you, you know, were disciplined. Them, you know, yeah. But yeah, yeah. And I and I did it. I had a wonderful I had a wonderful mother. Uh, you know, she worked very hard and she instilled good values in us. And uh, I remember she was domestic and I used to go to work with her and We'd be on our hands and knees, scrubbing floors and cleaning toilets and stuff. And she always say, oh, you missed a spot. Go back and do it wow. again. Mm. Any job worth doing is worth doing it right the first time. So mm-hmm. she taught me so much, mm-hmm. so much um, from, from her, um, you know, and, and she only had 10th grade education, but she was very wise, very mm-hmm. wise woman. And she taught us that living is giving. Mm-hmm. She oh, always I love said, that. And I, yeah. And I say, mom. You can't afford to do that. She said, God will give it back to me. Don't worry. We can feed another person. Mm-hmm. I can help this person. And and she always, she never wanted for anything. You know, she she just didn't. So that that's instilled in me and a lot of my siblings, you know. You you give and God will give it back to you. You know, you may, and so this is from from a young child up to me now, this age, and still working with young people. And I love it. It keeps me young. You know, even when I had my health issues and everything, uh, I bounced back you know, right. because I say I, my work's not finished. <laughs> I'm still it, here. It's about your outlook. Yes. Definitely. You know, when you you mentioned how you went to Chicago with your to live with your aunt, um, mm-hmm. that's where a lot of this originated. Isn't that correct? Where you just started uh, doing a lot of these things in Chicago. I mean, what exactly were you able to start there? Well, you know, some of it started when I was in my hometown of Logansport, Indiana, working um, with the youth and the choir. I played piano and the little small okay. organ for my church. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I had the administrative skills that I didn't even realize what I had. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always loved to play school. After school was out, I set up my own school. And my mom always said, what are you doing? I said, I'm playing school. I'm going to have the kids over and we're going to have math. I'm going to do English. And I'm like, and I, you know, I don't, I had fun. Right. You know, again, that was another thing that prepared me for where I am. So when I moved to Chicago at 18, um, then I got involved with, a, a, a was a small church at the time. And mm-hmm. I got involved with their choir. The church had less than a hundred members and the church grew and grew. And I was able to work wow. with the church and with the pastor and I learned so much and about music and about administration, more than what I ever thought I'd learn. Our wow. church grew to 25,000 members. Oh, my God. Less than 100 to 25,000. Bishop Arthur Embrasure, may he rest in peace. He was like my father. My mother said, take care of my daughter. She's young. She's here in Chicago. And he became like my father. And his okay. family became like my family. But we went to 25,000 times thousand members oh my god built a mega church it's still there he's passed wow. away his son his son pastors it now okay. and i tell you i've had so much experience in there working with the choir uh working with the we work with a uh, it was, it was a group called the symphonietta they were part of the chicago symphony okay and i got to work with them i got to meet the person that started it i had so much exposure i had a television show um, I started a recovery home in Chicago oh for women, women mm. with and had children and they were on drugs. Uh, I started that. It became a model for the state called Forever Free. 
And uh, I, I worked with Catholic Charities for 28 years. And we had a major department there where I worked with children. I worked with senior citizens. They were they gave me full range to create programs. And they said, now you have to raise the money. You right. can create right. them. And, you know, and I, so, and I just, and I did that. Um, and I did that, like I said, for 28 years. Uh, and I, it was just phenomenal. I was still working with my church. Uh, and I worked with young people uh, in my agency. Uh, the city gave us money in the summer. And I, you know, I might have 200 kids working for me. Oh, I had a goodness. senior program. I had 150 seniors that worked for me. And the biggest program I had it was under what they called CETA, Comprehensive Employment Training Act. Okay. And I remember one night, my boss called me, and it was like 10 o'clock. He said, Betty, I'm going to going after a contract, it, but it's going to be major if we get it. And I mm -hmm. need to know, do you think you can handle it? Well, because we'll, we'll have to hit the ground running and get it set up in 30 days. And I said, of course I can, you know. So sure enough, he got the, it was like 1.2 million. We had 1,100 people that worked for us. Oh I gosh. set up 110 work sites, and I had I had 40 staff, and I put that together in 30 days. I worked oh day gosh. and night, and put together a dynamite staff. We had 1,100. I'm telling you, 1,100, and it was just for a short period of time in the summer. And I look back now, and I'm like, we do it, but I had a great staff. I'm still in touch with some of those people today. That's that amazing. With me. Yeah, well, that worked with me. Great people follow you, it seems like. I mean, yeah, you just, well, you're just you a miracle maker. You know what? God is the head of my life. And I love people. I love working mm -hmm. with people. I like challenges. I like to be able to be creative and surround myself with people that are creative and just want an opportunity to work and have good work ethics. Right. And because that makes my job easier because I don't know everything. So you find people right. that know what you don't know. Right. And then you make a team, you know, right. then you then you come together and you, then you could do so much. My person can't do it all. Some right. people think, oh, you know, I can do this. I'm doing. No, no, you can't. And, and you'll soon burn out, which, you know, I went through that too, a burnout. OK. Um, but when you surround yourself with people that 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 know things that you don't know. Then you make a team. That's what a that's what good management is. You know, it's building the team of people around you that don't that have skills that you don't have. And that's what I've always done. You know, I'm not a I can always learn from somebody else. I don't know it all. Mm. I don't pretend to know it all. Could you tell but my teaching, nine year old that right now? Because she tells me that she knows it all. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. The older you get, the less you know. You know, okay. You know, I tell my young people, I said, I'm still learning. I say every day I want to learn something right. new. Yep, yep. I want to challenge myself. I said, you you never know too much. You, you do. And there's so much knowledge out there that you can acquire. I'm you always know, so researching learn from other people. Yep. Yeah. Learn from other people. So, right. you know, I told her, right. yeah, do that. So uh, that's that's been my life. And you know, it's been, you know. When you talk about people that you've surrounded yourself with, um, not to name drop, but I think one of the people that you know might be Oprah Winfrey. Is that correct? Well, you know, um, when I opened my recovery home, I remember I was I was on, I was visiting with my mother, and I got a phone call from my staff. They said we got a call from Oprah Winfrey's office, and she mm -hmm. wants to put some of the ladies from our recovery home on TV. Okay. Can you get back here? So I went back and I talked with the producer of her show. And she said, we were not exactly sure how Oprah wants to construct this whole show, but I'll be in touch. So they did. And so we got on, I went on the show and then um, Oprah was there and she had the ladies on the show and I got to you know, talk with her and I met with her. And so she was very nice, very, very nice. And she kind of changed some of the things from what we were doing. And um, I said, wow, this is really phenomenal, you know, what she's doing. And it was on mm -hmm. that particular show where Oprah said, you know, I tried a little drugs when I was younger. 
And okay. that was the first time she said she had ever told anybody that she tried drugs. It's because the women on my show, you know, right. were recovering from drugs. Yeah, they were so transparent. And so yeah. And so afterwards, we got a chance to shake her hand and to talk with her. But I tell you, the person that I met, who I'm still friends with today, was Michael Jordan's mother, Dolores. Oh, wow. Uh, she came by the recovery home and she fell in love with the children. She fell mm -hmm. in love with the children. She fell in love with the children. And um, she just, we just hit it off. She was mm -hmm. just wonderful. Uh, I was invited to a party that Michael had, and um, I talked with him. I talked with Michael, and I said, "You know, you're, I, I admire you. You're such an awesome basketball player." I said, "But I'll tell you who I admire more: your mom." Mm -hmm. I said, "She's the bomb." Mm -hmm. I said, "She's so wonderful. She comes by the recovery home and, and everything." And then at that, then at that, at that time, his sister was in my choir. I said, and your sister sings in my choir. He says, oh, good. That's good for her. You know, I said, well, you need to come by sometime. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so but so that was my encounter with my. And so when I moved to Canton, Mrs. Jordan, she came several times to support me in the programs that I have. Oh, wow. OK. Yeah, she's been here. And then I saw her in June. Uh, I saw her in June when I was mm -hmm. in Chicago. And I hadn't seen her in a while and I hadn't spoken with her. And so I said, oh, wow. I said, this is just, this is just wonderful. Um, so anyway, she said, Betty, I'm still working over in Africa. And she's building this, I think it was a medical center. And she's, I think she was just about finished with it. And she said, and I said, well, you know, we kind of lost touch. So uh, she made sure I got her number. So if I can call her, but she's just a wonderful woman. And then Michael Jordan was just here for the enshrinement. Uh, I think one oh. of his friends was being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Okay. So Michael okay. was just here, you know. Okay. And uh, But I didn't reach out to him or anything. I don't even know if he would still remember me because it was some time ago. Now his mom, of course, just saw right. her. But uh, I've been able to meet some wonderful people, you know, in doing this work. Well, let's... Halle Berry, too. I think I told you, I told you, man, how Halle Berry... And she's from Ohio. Uh, she's from Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, when I did my recovery home, I remember one day walking into the conference room and this little tiny, little cute person with a little cap on stood up. And she says, hi, my name is Hallie. And I'm like, Hallie? I didn't recognize her. And she took the cap off. She says, Hallie Berry. I'm like, oh, my gosh. She said, I hope it's OK <laughs> that I'm you. here. She says, I'm getting ready to do this movie called Losing Isaiah. And she said, oh. I told them I wanted to do the research. And they said, well, you need to go see Betty. My name was McDaniel then. Go see Betty McDaniel. She has a recovery home. So that's why she came. Well, the women in my program read the script. They said, we need to change some things. First mm -hmm. of all, we don't talk like this. She said, change it. She said, I told them I want it to be real. So mm -hmm. some of the ladies in, that re in my recovery home, Forever Free, they changed part of the script. And then um, she sold, she showed them her wardrobe. She's, they said, we don't dress like that. We're, we're druggies. We don't dress like that. She says, well, what should I wear? So they had input on that. That's great. So when it was time to film, part of the women from my recovery home were in the first scene of the movie, Losing oh Isaiah. Gosh. Okay. And my, my name is in the, is um, in the credits. Okay. Betty McDaniel and Forever Free. We're in the, and that was an awesome movie. If you haven't seen it or whoever's watching it, watch that movie about a mother who lost her child because she was on drugs. And it's really, it's a real story. It's a real mm -hmm. story. So I had a big part in that. So it was that, wonderful. That is amazing. That is just amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, you okay. started a lot of organizations now in Canton, Ohio. And one of them was multi-development services. And, of Stark County. And that mm -hmm. was an arts program. Am I right? Well, you know what? It started out when, when I, you know, um, and I always say that God has had his hand on my life all my life. Yeah. And I remember that when I got married to Reverend Smith and moved here, my minister said to me, Betty, you have a work to do at Canton. And I said, no, I'm retired. Mm. I said, my husband has a little small church and I'm going to work in his church. He says, oh, I'll give you just a little short while and you'll be working. 
And, you know, I had, it was three months and, and I, it was like, I really heard this voice or it was in my spirit. Mm-hmm. It said, you can't retire. There's too much work to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't even know where I am. I just gotten there. And so mm-hmm. I talked to my husband and he said, well, there's a school down the street. Why don't you go down and see if there's something you can do? Long story short on that. I opened up what I called minority development services of Stark County. Okay. And. So I started working with a lot of minority families and helping the mothers and with the children. And then then my population kind of changed on me. And I said, oh, I'm working with all kinds of families. I'm working with Hispanics and I'm working with the Caucasian family. I'm working with this and I'm working with that. And so I said, well, I said, we, and my board said, we need to change the name because we're not just working with minorities. So we changed it to multi development services. Okay. Of okay. That's how that came about. Okay. And I tell you, I tell you, Anne, in three months, I had 71 clients, three months' time. There was such a need for mothers and children, so, similar to what I did in Chicago with Catholic Charities. Right. And so someone said, Well, you, why don't you open up a recovery home? I said, No, you have one here called Conquest. And I can refer moms to them if they need that kind of service. Right. And so that's what I did. But I had children's programs. I started um, a after, after school youth program. That's where the arts came in. And I had music. I had okay. choir. Yeah, and I had sports. Mm. We had soccer. We had swimming. Uh, we played a little basketball. And uh, we did theater. So mm. you see, that was preparing me for something later. And I didn't realize that at the time, see? see? So I did all of that. And then um, I had, I opened a homeless shelter and I opened up transitional housing. In one year, I had five pieces of paid for property. I didn't know these foundations. I had never written a grant because Catholic Charities wrote all of my grants. Okay. And so I started just writing from my heart because at that time, the grants were pretty easy to write. The, the, The requirements weren't not like they are today. And they started funding me. Mm. And I bought, had five pieces of property. I mean, it was the Hoover Foundation, you know, it was the Tipkin Foundation, Sisters of Charity. You know, I mean, it was just all of the major wow. foundations. And people were like, how did you get this money? I said, I just wrote a proposal. I want to help people. Mm. And they they loved, you know, my passion for the community and for the mm-hmm. for people in the communities, particularly families and children. Mm-hmm. And so we opened this beautiful, I took an old, really the house was on demo list and I was able Mm -hmm. to get the house and I believe it was the um, Stark Community Foundation bought that house for me. And then I got money from the city of Canton to renovate the house. Wow. And then the, it was the Dubal Foundation gave me money to buy all the furnishings and it was a beautiful home. I rebuilt it. I put in all new flooring, carpet, drapes. It was beautiful. And so I asked the mayor, his name was Watkins then. I said, why don't you come and cut the ribbon? Mm. So he said, I'd be happy to. Well, when he saw the home, he said, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Mm. He said, I can live in a home like this. This is wonderful. I said, well, I'll tell you what, if you ever become homeless, give me a call. (laughs) <laughs> but you know what it was beautiful i mean it really yeah. was and then then a couple of years later i said well i need a transitional house for once these homeless people you know they need a place to go mm-hmm. so i need transitional something they can transition into mm-hmm. so a young a, a person named tom shurry he's passed away he said betty i've got an apartment building if you can fix it up you know you could just use it So I was able to get some people to come and fix it up. Once again, I fixed it up really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And so the women could go from there into transitional housing. And my final place was I had a a nice home down the street. And I said, if a mother can get through the homeless shelter to transitional, then she'll need a place of her own. So then she went into this other home with her family. She stayed there two years, then we found her her own home. So it takes time. Mm, it's like sure. a three year. You know, I did this even in it Chicago does. with recovery home. You can't recover in 30 days. They'll say, go to 30 day detox or 30. Oh, yeah. You can't no. recover. Right? right. 
So I would keep those mothers up to a year in Chicago in my oh, recovery home. That's amazing. And then I had a transitional house there. And then we found them home. So I knew the process. Mm -hmm. So you see, that was that was getting me started in Chicago to work at Intent. You know, except it wasn't a recovery home, but it was a homeless shelter. But you got so, it. I mean, you, you understood. And I have so many stories. We would talk for days about all the stories and the places where God, you know, put me to help. It's all about what my mom told me, living is giving. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, when you're in this work, you, you can't be in this work for money. You oh, make very you. little money in social work. And mm -hmm. for years, I made no money. I just, I just did it. Mm -hmm. And right now, I just get a small stipend. Um, but if people think they're going to open up a 501c3 and work with families and make a lot of money, they're mistaken. And a lot of people go into it for that, Oof. you know, and that's the wrong reason. You mm -hmm. have to have that passion. You have to have that love for people and you want to mm -hmm. do good by them. It's not right. it's not about a paycheck. And I don't hire people that say, well, I need a job. No. Mm -hmm. Do you need this kind of job? Do you have a mm -hmm. passion for the kids? Mm -hmm. you, do you love it? If they don't, they can't work here. You, and right. you can never work for me if you didn't have the passion. You couldn't, you couldn't do it. Right. You, know, you just couldn't, couldn't do that. Well, I so, used to be a director of a battered woman's shelter and I, oh, we oh. too had the exact same kind of setup, but it mm -hmm. wasn't as long. And I really appreciate your passion and, and your knowledge for knowing that, and, and, Allowing the women to be set up for success, oh, you know, yeah. or exactly. because yes. that's what you really want to do. I mean, if somebody is standing in front of you and they are homeless or when I worked in the jail system and they really want a second chance, you know, you have to help set them up for success. And that's that's what Got you're to. doing. Yes. And, you know, another thing we're doing now, I met with um, the staff of the uh, for the that work with juvenile court. And the probation department, you know, these are, these are young people right. that, that, you know, just do dumb stuff Yeah, and they have misdemeanors. And so I said, send me some of those young people for community service that have to do community service yeah. and let me give them something, an education and get them involved in the arts and they can work their mm -hmm. hours off here while we're educating them. So they don't come back into your system, right. you know, so we're, we're, I've been wanting to do that for a, quite a while, but now that we've got the facility and and we have we have more th programs and things, but we just started this last week. Oh and wow! So, in fact, we just got our first referrals yesterday to okay. young people, and we'll work with them. Oh, and we work wonderful. with the jobs people. Yeah, we work with the jobs people and those who are receiving a check, and you know you have to work to get your check, and so we've got. Three of them working here now. They're doing a wonderful job. These are talented See, young people. Just giving you them know. a chance. And there you're you teaching go. them the skills because there's nothing yes. more important than, you know, young people learning life skills and job skills right. and all the things right. that make them an independent, productive adult. Right. And and the discipline, you know, we has to be there. You have to be on time. You have to dress appropriately. Right. You know, right. these are the things that we teach them. We instill in them the values and things. And life skills so that when you leave here and you go to a job, you'll be ready. But someone very talented, once young lady, she's very good with the computer. Oh, so she's helping us and things. So that's what it's, it's all about. Yeah. One young man said, well, I really like to clean. So maybe I could help you clean the building. I'm like, well, of course, we always need somebody to help us keep the sure. building clean. Sure. He said, but you'll have to train me. I don't know how to do everything. And I said, well, that's why you're here. Mm -hmm. And he's worked out. So he was with me this summer. And they let me keep him over now because he's still got some time that he needs to work on and they pay him. So that mm -hmm. helps me too. Mm -hmm. But he's learning and he and he loves it here and we love him. Yeah, it's honing in on those skills that they love and be able yes. to teach them new new skills yeah. and how to do it out there in the world. I mean, oh my exactly. gosh, what you're doing is amazing. I love it. I love, I love what I do. I mean, you know, and this is why I get up in the morning. You know, and I always say, God, mm. what are you going to do today? And mm. what what challenges am I going to have today that I know I'll meet them? Uh, mm. Because, you know, like I say, I have a strong faith. And uh, I just I just look forward to coming here and working with the kids. And now we have an affiliation with the Blue Coats. Uh, I can remember a couple of years ago, I went to Foundations for Money. I said, I really need some capacity building money. See, I've been working basically with part time staff. And uh, college students, college mm -hmm. students, said, we, they helped me put this program together. That's all I had. 
And I used to just do everything, the bookkeeping. I was every, I wore about 10 hats. Mm. And so then when I went to the foundations, who have always been good to me, they said, Betty, you need a couple of things. You need sustainability and you need a succession plan. And so this is where um, the Blue Coats was always there to try to help me out because we have drumline. And so I t- we talked about uh, how they could help me. And what we came up with was an affiliation agreement where they would put some of their board members on my board and vice versa. And then okay. I'd be a non-voting member on their board and their CEO and CFO, COO would be non-voting members on my board. And then they would, would help me like with fundraising. And so that this program can be around a long time when, when okay. I'm no longer working in this program or here, this program has to go on because it's so valuable to the community. So then I talked with Mr. Ted Swaldo, who is the founder of Gervasi Vineyard. And okay. he's also connected with the Blue Coats. His son was in the Blue Coats when he was younger. Wow. And I told him, I said, for five years, I've been praying for a building. I want one, one story with a lot of windows because the building I had been in, we're kind of in the church basement and there was not any windows per se. So I tell you, in a short period of time, he found the old Ziegler Tire Building mm. on the corner of Ninth and Market. And he says, I got the perfect building for you. And I tell you, he transformed this building into oh my goodness. Just a state of the art fine arts building. Oh, I mean, is it all done? Have, is it's it all, yes, it's completed. And you'll have to come by for a tour. Oh, I want and that to. That could be another show where we just take a tour of this facility and show the, the two art rooms that I have, the two dance studios, the huge drum line room, and a state of the art kitchen for our creative cooking class. And we can feed the kids a well balanced meal after school. And we did it this summer for camp. Do you have a garden too? We have a garden on the corner of 7th and Fulton Road. The kids grow vegetables and then we have lots of flowers. We have butterfly garden. And then we use some of that. We use some of that food out of the garden um, for cooking. And the young lady that does the cooking, she um, uses that, you know, the food out of the out of the garden and she teaches them about eating healthy and all that kind of good stuff. You know, it's just wonderful. It's just it's just wonderful. So we have the creative cooking and that's a very popular class. Even I've had parents say I need to be in that class, you know, because our kids just they, they eat a lot of junk. Right. Right. You know, and, and we give them fruit and vegetables when they were having the lunch here. Then we'll do after school because I get some of the kids as early as three thirty. Well, they haven't eaten since lunch. So now we'll be able to give them a full course dinner Mm -hmm. and then they'll go to study hall and then they will go to their class. And I have them to about 615. So before when I had them after school, we only had snacks because we didn't have a kitchen. And Mm -hmm. they would say, Miss Betty, I'm still hungry. And sometimes we might have to buy food and we've got to be very expensive pizza and stuff like that, sandwiches. And then sometimes people would donate. And we always take donations for food because kids are always hungry. When they come here hungry, you can't function if you're hungry. Right. And some of the kids at this bed, I'm hungry. And like I said, kids stay hungry all the time. They want to eat. But I want right. to give them something healthy. I'm giving something healthy. And then every now and then we'll do a treat. You know, we'll we'll do uh, ice cream or we'll we'll mm-hmm. have some cookies or something like that. Uh, but I want them to know that, you know, you need to start young, taking care of your health. Uh, so very important to take care of your health when you're younger, to work out, to condition your body. You know, I teach them all of that. Right. I did that in the recovery home in Chicago. We had workouts and we, over, over in Chicago, I took them over by the lakefront and we did walked along the wake, lakefront. And some of them had never even seen the lakefront in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, and we take the kids, we give the kids experiences that they would never be able to have if they didn't have this program. We expose right. them. Exposure is everything. Yes. Expose them to a lot of different things that they can do to make it in life. Life skills are so, so important. Um, Etiquette classes last year, and we're going to do again this year, Mr. Swaldo's wife, Linda Swaldo, she's such a sweet, lovely lady. We, she she did an etiquette class. We took them to Gervasi first class and Mm -hmm. she taught them, you know, how to properly sit in the napkin. I said, I learned some things too. Sometimes I don't know which fork to use if we have a lot of these forks and spoons and knives and things. Right. And she did it and the kids just, they'll never forget it. So she said she mm-hmm. would do it for me again, that probably this fall, we'll have another etiquette class 
uh, at your and what, what better place, right? At Gervasi. Some of them say, Wow, I'm at Gervasi. I'm like, yeah. So to disclose them, you know? Sure, sure. And this all falls under enrichment. Is that correct? Yes. Enrichment. And on Facebook, we're known as Enrichment of Stark County. Okay. But it, and enrichment is spelled differently because it's all capitals and it's got dashes in it. E N dash R I C H dash M E N T. Because someone had it, had it without the dashes. So in oh. it's, it, we have the Enrichment Arts Education Center at 901 Market North in Canton, Ohio. You, you can't miss this. I mean, we, we just light up that corner. And at night, there are lights on our name. Mr. Swaldo had the lights underneath the word enrichment. We got lights on the landscaping outside. It's just beautiful. Oh, you, I can't wait they, to see it. You have, I mean, people just ride by and admire, you oh. know, the beacon of light. That's you know, Someone said you're a gem on the corner of Ninth and Market. Oh, wow. You that's know? amazing. Yeah. I, yeah. So we're a part of a campus, really. Because um, Arts and Stark is next door. And, you know, they have the ballet. They have the museum. Uh, okay. And they have Sing Stark over there. Oh, so we're okay. part of that. Now they have a park next to us. So okay. we have a park. If the drumline wants to go over there and practice. They can go yeah. over there and practice in the park. So yeah. it works out really well. Again, it's for the community. You know, we just work together. And all this, wasn't it like a $1.75 million campaign that, you know, yes. made this happen. That's, that's exactly right. And then, as Mr. Swaldo got in here, he saw other things. He said, "Oh, we need this. I need a little more money. We need this." And you know, God just blessed him. I think we raised up. To, he raised up to two point one million. Oh my gosh! Oh yeah. my goodness! I mean, and when you see the building, you'll see. I mean, this is just state of the art. It's okay. just he had the finest of contractors, and some of them donated their time you know, and, or donated materials or it, it just, it's just, it was a community collaborative effort, even with contractors and foundations. Project. And of course we still need money because we have a beautiful building, but I need more classes now. I need more teachers and it, it takes money, you know, to do all of that. So that's, mm. that's very important. So we're constantly doing fundraisers you know, that's, that's real important that I, you know, still do that and raise the money. Sometimes our drummers will go out and we have a big sign that says drumming for dollars. Oh, and geez. So that's we'll, awesome. Yeah. And the, and the people love the drumming. So they'll come up and put money in the bu bucket. Uh, I mm -hmm. remember uh, this summer, uh, six of the Blue Coats drummers came out on their day off and they drum with our drummers on a corner. And in 35 minutes, we had $255. Oh, that's <laughs> See, you're still, you're just, fun, miracles you know? follow you. Miracles oh, follow I'm you. you. I'm telling you, I am, I am blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed. But, you know, because I have a passion and a love for people, and particularly the kids. Right. Uh, we have to, we have to take care of our young ones. And you start, and we start at age five. You oh, know, sometimes okay. kids have already formed their own opinions and what they're going right. to do when they're that young. So you yes. have to start young and putting the good stuff in them. And let right. them know they're loved and they're cared about, you know, and keep them on the right foot. You know, right. and we work with the parents and, they, and we work with autistic children. That's what children I was just going to say. I saw that yeah. you have a space for autism, mm -hmm. kids with yes. autism. And I've got three autistic kids. And, mm -hmm. you know, it would be amazing to see what you have there, what the facility yes. is like. Yes. We have a sensory room that's just um, that was donated to us, a, a young lady named Miss Schumacher. Um, she has an autistic mm. son, and she told Mr. Swallow, I know what's needed in that room. And oh, it's wow. solid. It's soundproof, and it's got different lights in the room. Um, it's got okay. you know, heavy-weighted things that they can sit on. She said everything that they – and we use it this summer. But I want to work with all kinds of – all children. You right, know, right. we're all God's children and and we get along and we they all love one another and they take care of one another. And that's what it's all about. And this that's is all free it. for everybody. Is that correct? It is free. This this program, they pay for no classes. Our drum line, color guard, dance line. They don't pay for anything. We buy their uniforms, their shoes, their socks that's, that's from amazing. head to toe, you know, because most of these young people cannot afford it. Uh, we're probably uh, about 95% low to moderate income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And this summer, uh, we had 192 
in camp. And if I'd had more more teachers and more money, I would have I could have had another 30 kids in camp. We had to put them on a waiting list. Um, okay. But, you know, yeah. And we had 77 schools represented in our program this summer. Last year it was mm -hmm. 55. This year, 77 schools. And this mm -hmm. year, this is the first year they even came from other um, counties. You know, we probably are a base with Canton kids, but they come from different schools. We had them from Malvern and Marlboro and Carrollton and Louisville. And they just, you know, and they had a great time. Mm -hmm. It's had a great time. You know, you, you can know, tell who was from what school, you know. You don't give up it, on a child, do you? You do. Not, I never do. There's no such thing as a bad child. I don't even like for people to say, oh, you're bad. You're, and you never put that in a child's head because they'll think they're bad mm -hmm. and then they'll do bad stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we had one young lady. Um, she came to very quiet, very reserved. And then she found out that she liked drums. And then uh, she posted something on Facebook and she says, it's like, I have a reason now to go out of the house every day. I have mm -hmm. enrichment. I have the drum line. I have Miss Betty. It was just heart wrenching. Yeah. And I said, that's what I do. What I do. You're changing lives. Yeah. And we have signs all over in that say enrichment. The arts save lives. We put those everywhere. I want enrichment to become a household name. People you know, say, oh, enrichment. oh, yeah. Yeah. It was the same with me growing up. I mean, the thing, the things that helped me were the arts, drawing and um, being creative and yeah. music, my music, the music I listened yeah. to. And, and I also was in the band and I played clarinet too. And oh, I played wow. piano. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I have my kids in different music. Um, they play piano and guitar and things like mm -hmm. that. But I mean, mm -hmm. I really believe That's for right. one thing, it's a universal language and it brings yes, people it together. It brings Most people definitely. together that would not yes. have been together. That's correct. That's correct. So I commend you, Anne, on, you know, on your podcast and the things that you do and the experiences that you've had and still trying to help people. That's wonderful. We need more to do that, you know? In all the decades that you've been doing this, I mean, the kids that you were helping, you know, 30 years ago or, you know, are so much different than the kids that you have now. What are the biggest oh, differences that you see with our kids today? And well, the biggest you know, I think we had problems before COVID, but oh, COVID mm -hmm. hit and the kids were isolated and they were at home and they, were, they had okay. no social life. Okay. That that's that's a carryover. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the kids are still being homeschooled. Uh, oh. And I find that they have no social skills. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's that's been a that's been a problem. But enrichment brings that out of them. That's why I was telling you the story about the young girl and his young. Yeah, wow, well, I found my found why I need to come out every day and do something. Mm -hmm. um, but the kids are just hardcore. Uh, you know, the gang activity is real out there and not mm -hmm. just Canton. It's, it's everywhere. And so that's mm -hmm. why programs like enrichment are so important to steer these mm -hmm. kids in the right direction. So they don't want to get because gang, gang members are always recruiting. They kids. I've had young people tell me what was seven years old. And he said they were recruiting him. But he mm -hmm. had a bad life at home and they know how to recruit them. They're very kind to them. They want to buy mm -hmm. them things, take them, you know. So the, the kids latch on to that. And he told me, he's Miss Betty, I was seven. And he said they recruited me, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, oh wow. He ended up going, he ended up going to jail, you know. And you know, he was, I think he was in jail maybe three or four years. When he got out, mm -hmm. he came back to see me. He says, I'm a I'm a changed person now. I want to, I want to be on the straight now. I want to do the right things, Betty. But I didn't know what I was doing. I was young, you mm -hmm. know? And so we have to, we have to watch that. And then the, the kids, some of the kids today, they have no respect for adults. Oh. Um, it, but I think sometimes the parents are so young and then some of the parents are afraid of their children. Mm -hmm. And one thing in enrichment, we, we're disciplinarians and I let them know that. You will not come in here and be up in anybody's face and tell me what you're going to do and what you're not going to do, because then you won't be here, mm -hmm. you know, and so they want to be here. So I mm -hmm. said, we have rules and we have regulations. And I have even had a few young people that I've heard them just talking very disrespectfully to mm -hmm. their parents. And I jumped, I said, wait a minute, you, 
you, I said, I can't control what you do when you're out of here, but when you're here, you will respect your mom. Mm-hmm. You will do that. Mm-hmm. And then later I talked to him and, you know, and he's, he's as well. And then of course he wants to blame everything on mom, right? Mom, 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 mm-hmm. mom. I said, but you know, that's still mom and you mm-hmm. must respect her. But we, we do have, we do have some of that, you know, where the kids are just not mm-hmm. respectful of their parents. And sometimes the parents can't control them, but we do have some parents that say, I do need help, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm thankful for your program because my son or my daughter love to be here. Uh, they feel safe. And and they know Miss Betty is a strict disciplinarian, and some mm-hmm. of them say, I, "I I think I need that." Mm-hmm. You know, kids don't want to be bad. I I don't believe that. Be bad. No, I had a, I had a group come to me this summer, Ann, and they said, "Miss Betty, we want to do better." And we and this this is a spokesperson for about five middle school kids, and she said, "We want to do better. We want to be respectful. We want to be here." And we're sorry, you know, if we've caused you any problems. I, I was wow. very touched. Wow. But you know, I did, I put them with a behavior specialist. So every week they would have a session, a group session, uh-huh. and they were able to just talk. Sometimes we don't give young people an opportunity to express themselves. You mm-hmm. have to let them talk, mm-hmm. you know, so they got an, we had an opportunity to talk mm-hmm. about things that were bothering them. And then they had this person that knew how to, you know, how to interact with them in the, mm-hmm. the appropriate way. Mm-hmm. So that's needed. We'll we'll do that again this fall. Um, so it's like whatever these kids need to make it, that's what I want to do here, you know, at enrichment. And you know, if gangs uh, are trying to recruit them, you know, it's oh, really yeah. important that you are there because Most then definitely. it's, you know, they have another place to go when these people yes. are trying to bring them in. So there's another place that's offering them a different kind of love. There you go. That's exactly right. And some of the, some of the children come here very broken. Some mm-hmm. of them are very sad. Some of them don't want to be here at first. Mm-hmm. The parents just feel like this is a good place for you. And mm-hmm. I've had some of them, and I have to talk to them too. And I say, and I always let them try different things. Okay, try working uh, in, the, in a cooking class or let's go to an art class. And I'll let them do three different things. And they usually find their niche. Mm. They usually find it. But art mm-hmm. and cooking are very good. And gardening. My autistic children love the garden. Mm-hmm. They they just have a wonderful time in the garden. And a lot of my kids with behavior problems, I send them to the garden. And they love okay. it. Being outdoors, yeah. you know, nature. Get their hands get in the dirt. Yeah. There you go. That's right. That's right. And they, yeah. and they love that. They love it. Yeah. Yeah. My three so autistic everything- kids love dirt. Yeah. <laughs> They love dirt. <laughs> See? Oh, so that's that's why the garden, the garden takes a lot of work. We need more volunteers in the garden. A couple of times I thought about closing it down. Then I was like, no, this is really good for the kids. It's healthy. I'll I'll get some volunteers. I'll I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. One so, of the other things besides COVID is I really do think is social media. I mean, I didn't have social oh, media. You didn't have social media. And no. the things that it's doing, I mean, people can even be bullied you know, 24 hours a day where it used to be yes. just in the schools, but now That's people right. can reach other kids and, and, sure can. you know, be a lot of it violating. Goes on on social media. Yes. yes. We've, we've talked it. See, I told my young people, Oh, I'm on your Facebook page. So you better be careful what you're putting out there mm. uh, and don't block me, mm. you know, and some of them, they put things out and I'll call them and I'll say, no, take that down, take that post down. You don't do this. Mm-hmm. You don't go at one another on social media calling them names mm-hmm. and stuff and kids do right, that. Right, right. Yeah. It's, it's I, I, so she, yeah. I, t- I tell yeah. my daughter when she starts acting out with all of her behaviors, I say to her, you're too beautiful for this. You're too oh, beautiful on the inside yeah. for you to be able to right. do things like this. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, and there's just a lot of ugly out there. And Yes, there is. There really is. And it's very tempting. And then if, then if young people don't have support at home, it's even mm-hmm. more enticing, you know, so parents have to spend time with their children and, and, and talk to them mm-hmm. like find out what's going on. You're who are you hanging out with? Where are you? Right. Right. You know, we, we get so, I think adults get so busy and of course moms, sometimes some moms work one, two, three jobs trying to mm-hmm. make ends meet. Right. But you, you have to remember, you've got a child that needs you uh, mm-hmm. and you have to have pri- set priorities 
and, and your child has to be a priority. Um, you know, let them know that you love them and that you're there for them. And that's so that kids just want to be loved, you yeah. know, and just a hug, you know, and some of them will come up and just grab me and just, Miss Betty, I need a hug today. Right. You know, and I give them hugs, you know, I, I hug our kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you have to be very careful, you know, sensitive right. about that, but they feel the love. They know I love them. You know? Right. And, and really, isn't that all that we want? Isn't that all anybody Listen, wants? That's right. I had one of my teachers come to Miss Betty. I just need a hug today. Yeah. And I said, you got it. Um, yeah. Adults, we need hugs too. <laughs> well, you, you really did touch on a lot, especially, you know, what us adults could do for kids because oh, yeah. we want to give them a chance in life and it's not the world that we grew up in, you know? And no. so I, we want to be able to give them a great start in life. I, yes. I can't stand that. I see kids that are already tainted and broken at yeah. such a young age that by the right. time they reach adulthood, you know, it's already been set. And, and That's I true. too, I too don't believe in, a child that doesn't have a chance. Every, every kid has hope and a belief yes. in them. If we believe in right. them, they will believe in themselves that's eventually. Right. That's and right. it might take time. Yes, that's true. That's true. But we just, we have to do what we have to do to make the lives of these children better. We have to do that. And we know that there are some parents that won't do it, but mm -hmm. that's why we have enrichment because we have people here that love the children in spite of where they've come from, you know, and all the things. But we've also been able to turn some parents around to get involved mm. in their children's lives. You know, I have to mention that you were named one of the eight over 80 who make a huge difference in the community. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah, that's that amazing. Nice. Yeah, that I was very, uh, I, I'm, I'm always just, just, you know, very humbled when something like that happens. That was Crane's Business Magazine. Okay. And it was eight over 80 and they picked eight people and I was nominated and, you know, it, it made me feel very good. It made me feel good. You know, we don't do this kind of work to get awards and things, but it's nice to be appreciated. Nice well, appreciate. then they learn more about your program too. That's you right. Know? I mean, and, and I do a lot of things for exposure to give sure. us, you know, so, so people will know about us so more. So parents will know. So there's still a lot of people don't know about enrichment that they can bring their kids here and it's free. Um, and so we, we need that kind of exposure uh, to, to bring about awareness to the families that we're here. We're here for your children. You know, I know that you have some talent thing. Like I went to Canton Idol like years oh, and years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it was such a fun thing. And also, I mean, you have like a housing program, I think. I mean, you have lots of different. Is there any other yeah, program? I did. I did Cat and Idol for. I did Cat and Idol for maybe 12, 15, maybe 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, then I had my own uh, television show with Canton City Schools mm -hmm. called On Track with Betty Mac. And I would keep the community updated on things that were going on and for youth mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, so so that was in. And so we're going to do a little. Our kids are going to have their own little podcasts and do some things mm. because youth can reach youth, you know, so they'll Absolutely. talk their language and things that they can do. And that's important. And we also have a YouTube network that we're going to revive and the kids are going to run that, you know, they're going to run that and it could become a job eventually, you know, everything we train them to do is so that eventually, you know, they could make some money mm. and have a, have a, have a job, uh, you know, that's worthwhile, mm -hmm. you know, instead of selling drugs or something like that. You're just a beautiful person. Well, thank you. You really Annie. are. Thank you so much. I appreciate this interview and talking. I love to talk about the kids and the families right. and the things and God has passion. done in my life but to help others. Well, thank you so much for being on Real Talk with Tina and Anne. Miss Betty, I am inspired by you every thank single you. day. And as usual yeah. on Real Talk, we say that there is purpose in the pain and there is hope in the journey. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for listening. Yeah.